Hi everyone, this is Michael Iobrock uh, with Diesel Laptops and uh, today in this uh, tech tip video I'm going to be uh, going over some uh, fundamentals of uh, J1939 CAN bus and uh, explain the operation of the modules, how they communicate and then I'm going to go over some circuit faults that you're going to see on J1939 CAN uh, when you're using an oscilloscope because when you're using an oscilloscope and looking at circuit faults, it's going to look different. So I'm going to go over some of the common circuit faults that you see uh, with CAN. Okay, so first off, I'm going to show everyone uh, what I'm working with here. So I've got some pictures here to share. So the first thing I want to show you is, is this is what I'm working off of right now. This is our J1939 communication board. It's our troubleshooting board that we use in our uh, J1939 communication class uh, in person at all our locations in the United States. Okay, so I've got the board here. I've got our diesel scope here, which is a Pico scope 4425A. Okay, and then I also I am using a J1939 uh, breakout box. It's made by uh, DG Technologies. That way I can interface uh, to the communication network uh, more easily with my uh, banana plug leads plugged in here. And then the way I'm going to put in some circuit faults is is I'm going to use this resistance uh, decade box that I have here to put in different resistances to show you how the circuits are affected on the oscilloscope. Okay. But before we get started, I'm just going to go over some basics here to explain to everyone the communication uh, of CAN and, you know, how it works. All right. So I made up this little picture here of basically a 1939 backbone with 220 ohm resistors. Okay. And then I've got four modules here. I've got my engine controller, my ABS controller, my transmission controller, and my body controller. And then I also have a Nexic uh, device tester hooked up through my breakout box with my oscilloscope. And the way I've got my channels laid out right now to show you a, a circuit fault here in a little bit is I've got channel A, which is blue, and channel B, which is red, going to the breakout box, which is going right off of the diag connector right here. So I'm looking at the entire backbone, okay? And then on channel C in yellow, that's going to can high at my body controller. And channel, uh, it's actually, I'm sorry, channel D is going to high on the body controller. And channel C in green is going to low on the body controller. Okay, so basically how these modules communicate is... Um, it communicates signals off of the high, uh, the high wire and the low wire, and those voltages are 3.5 volts peak on the high, okay? So 3.5 on the high and then 1.5 volts on the low. And then these signals here, they ride off of a 2.5 volt uh, bias, and that's the starting point. And the reason why they go off of a 2.5 volt bias is because it's uh, it helps minimize the noise in your circuit, uh, and it also uh, just gives you better all communication when you're going from that two and a half volt bias. All right. Now we also have 220 ohm resistors, and these 220 ohm resistors also help with the reflections in the circuit and. By reflections in the circuit, I mean basically the transmissions basically from the modules, okay? Because if you didn't have these end-of-line resistors in here, you would get more reflection from the rest of the modules, and it can cause interference basically, and it can degrade your signal. So that's the reason why they've got these 120-ohm end-of-line resistors in here, okay? And another thing to keep in mind as well, since this is electricity, um, if you think of some Ohm's law here, if you take 220 ohm resistors and you divide them by two, that comes out to 60 ohms, okay? Because in, a par in parallel circuits, the resistance of the parallel circuit is always going to be lower than the least value resistor, which is 120 ohms. So if you take that divided by two, you have a total circuit resistance of 60 ohms, 
Okay. So when it wants to, when a module wants to transmit a message, it sends out that three and a half volt and one and a half volt pulse out of the module and then it goes on the backbone and then all the other modules see that transmission and they decide if they want to have it or not okay so it'll basically come out of your uh, high and low on the module okay so it'll come out and then it basically then goes by each of these modules kind of like a uh, Oh, like a subway, you know, so it's going to each stop and then it's basically looking at the other modules and it's asking, hey, do you need this information? And if it does, it takes in the information. If it doesn't, then it just, it ignores it, okay? So that's what's going on here with this communication network, okay? So um, that's how they communicate. They send out the voltages on the backbone and then each module looks at the messages, okay? So that's basically, that's the gist of it for communication with CAM, all right? So now that I've explained a little bit more on how CAM bus works and how the messages are being sent out, next thing I'm gonna show you is, uh, is my device tester, okay? So if I go over here to Nexic device tester and click on it, as you can see, I have communication, all right? Because I've got all these messages here going up and down. And then it's also telling me all the modules that are detected as well. So it's showing here that I've got my service tool on here. That's my Nexic, okay, because uh, your interface is also a module as well, all right. Then I've got my brakes, my transmission, my engine, and my body controller, okay. So now what I'm going to do is I'm just going to show you what the CAN bus looks like on the oscilloscope. So let's go ahead and go to the diesel scope. And right here, as you can see, channel A and B, that's can high and can low at my breakout box. And channels uh, C and D, that's uh, my leads at the body control module. All right, so if we take our measurement cursors here and go to can high, we got about 3, 4, 3.5 volts. Okay, and then when I go to can low, I got about 1.5 volts, okay? Now, if I measure the line where the voltage originates from, it originates at a 2.5 volt bias right there, okay? So that's your communication. It's sending out these pulses off of both lines at the same time, and it's going through the circuit and then going to all the other modules, okay? All right, so now, with that being said and then explained, I'm going to show you what a circuit fault looks like uh, at the body control module. So what I'm going to do is I'm basically going to put a fault into the board on this one where I'm going to create an open on can high that goes to the body control module. Okay, And I want you to pay attention to how the signal looks like. Okay, So let me go hit the switch and I'm going to show this to you. All right, so I just put an open in the can high wire that goes to the body control module and I'm my test point is at the body control module now if you look here on the main uh, can high and low at my breakout box the messages still look pretty good right there right but now I want you to look down here I still have can low at the body module but my can high signal at the body module it's gone okay so if I take a measurement here My measurement, I'm at like 2.3, 2.4 volts, okay? So what's happening here, since that wire's open, you're not seeing that 3.5 volt pulse on there, okay? But one thing you are seeing, though, is you're seeing ringing here in the signal on the very end, okay? So if I zoom out a bit on this, if you notice right here, I've got ringing in the signal, and the reason why we're seeing that ringing in the signal is because of we only got the open in the one wire, so you're seeing it through uh, the other circuits as well, okay? So you see it in the uh, can high and can low 
at the box and then also you see it at the body module all right so if i go back to the wiring schematic here i've opened up this wire right here okay so it's not sending a voltage out of there however okay since it's not sending a voltage out of that wire those uh, that reflection that you're seeing is actually a uh, a signal the computer is sending out for uh, acknowledgement basically okay because it's trying to get a signal but nothing's coming out okay but we're still able to see our can low because it's putting out a signal okay so even though you know we can still see this on here the signal uh, the uh, the acknowledgement we can see it because that's where we're connected at the scope, but we can also see it on the other leg too to can high and low because that signal is reflecting through the can low here. All right, so if I go back to the scope, as you can see here, it's causing a reflection and ringing because of that open wire. All right, so here's... Ch uh, can high which is d can low which is c it's causing a ringing in there all right and then it's also being reflected on the can high and can low here as well okay so that's what's going on all right so when you see this type of waveform what you need to do first is before getting too confused and uh, getting confused by this signal right here you need to look at your base message coming out of the module. So you're going to look for the three and a half uh, on the high and the one and a half on the low. All right. And then where you're connected at that module, then you're going to see that other message. It's going to line up with the top one here when you've got a trigger on your scope. OK, so you'd still be able to see it with no trigger, but it just take you a little bit longer to to find it and see what's going on. OK. But like I said, if you notice here, my can high at the module, it's flatlined. So that's telling you right there that that wire is open. Okay. So uh, what I'm going to do here is I'm just going to zoom out a bit and show you what this looks like on a longer screen. So here's uh, two seconds of division. Then I'm just going to stop the scope. Then I'm going to zoom in, and we're just going to do two little snippets right here, okay? So if you look where I'm connected at at the breakout, uh, at the main dyad connector, I've got both signals here, okay? But since I've lost that one leg, okay, which is the, the high at the body module, okay, it flatlined right here okay and then it's causing a ringing effect after that okay so it's trying to communicate here the module basically sees that it's not able to put out communication and then what happens is the body control module it starts sending out this acknowledgement signal here okay so the acknowledgement signal basically means that it's trying to communicate with the bus, but no one's reacting to the message, okay? So since that's happening, this signal here is reflecting in to the rest of the, uh, the backbone, okay? So that's the reason why you're seeing this. Now, if you see a, a signal where you've got good can at your breakout box or at a main connection on the backbone, and you see nothing but this signal here at the module, then that means both wires are broken, okay? So I'm going to show that to everyone next so you can get an idea what that looks like, okay? So let me go ahead and restart the scope, and then I'm going to zoom in, and then I'm just going to disconnect both wires so you can see both of them at the same time, okay? So let's go back to that small screen, and I'm going to do my trigger there and now we're back the way we were before all right so I'm gonna take away the bug and it'll go back to normal all right so now we're back to normal we've got good communication all right now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna disconnect the wires at the module 
uh, and I'm going to show you what that acknowledgement signal looks like. Okay, so now as you can see, my can high and my can low, I'm not getting any, any reflection into my lines. But at the body module here, I've got these constant pulses here, okay, and that's the module sending out a signal trying to get communication. So it's basically like, you know, if, say you uh, go to a bar, you know, and you're trying to find your buddies to have a drink and you're waving like, hey man, is anybody here? Is anybody here? And and nobody's waving because maybe they're just passed out because they drank too much, you know. So, <laughs> so but uh, but anyway, that that's what's going on here, okay. So that's this is what you're gonna see when the wires are broke at the body controller, okay. All right. So now that I've explained that, let's uh, let's go over uh, some other faults here that you're gonna see as well. All right. So I'm gonna reconnect uh, the body controller wires. And now we're back to normal. Okay, so now I'm gonna basically uh, I'm gonna get a a breakout box here, and then I'm gonna put in some resistance uh, to the circuit. Okay, so I've now put resistance into uh, can low the green trace at the body control module. All right, so if we go back to the picture that I made. I have basically put resistance in this wire at the at the body controller. So my resistance is basically about right here, and then my test lead is about right here. Okay. So what's going to happen is I'm going to see resistance uh, from that when I basically get a uh, a message that's trying to be sent, you know, to the uh, the body controller. Okay. And then not only that, you'll also see the resistance when the message is also being sent out as well. Okay, so let's go back to the scope and pay attention to this green trace here as I add in resistance. So I'm just going to put a measurement cursor down here so everyone can keep tabs on where it's going. All right. And then I'm also going to uh, zoom the channel up a little bit, make it a little bit easier to see, and then I'll do that to channel D as well. All right, and then I'm just going to drag this down a bit. Now keep in mind my voltage levels are still going to be the same here. I've just manipulated uh, the scope software basically to stretch this vertically up a little bit more so we can see this better. Okay, so let me get that right there, and now I'm going to add in resistance to this wire and I want you to pay attention to the can low voltage, all right? So that's 20,000 ohms right there, okay? And as you notice, when I put that resistance in there, what happened to my voltage for can low? It drifted up, okay, because that's on the low side, the ground, all right? So then if I measure this where it's going, it's only going down to about 2 volts instead of 1.5 as it's supposed to okay so that's what you're going to see when you get resistance on can low when you've got resistance at a module okay okay so now uh, the next type of uh, circuit fault I'm going to show everyone is I'm going to show you what happens to the can waveform when you start losing end-of-line resistors okay so I'm going to disconnect uh, one at a time and I want you to pay attention to the extra noise that gets put into this signal, okay? I'm at a good sample rate. I'm at 2,940,000 samples a second. So that's uh, ten, more than 10 times the amount of 250 kVOD. So we're good there. So pay attention to the waveform when I disconnect the end line resistors. So I'm gonna disconnect one. Oh, we're getting some more noise in there, more ringing. I'm gonna disconnect the other one now. And now we've got even more, and it's even worse, okay? So this is why you get communication problems when you lose end-of-line resistors, because you get extra noise in the signal, and it affects your communication and your data packets. So if I stop this for a second and zoom in just to a little sliver here, it's losing its communication here, okay? 
So when that happens, basically it loses its ability to, to see the messages, okay? Because the computers are basically looking at the rising and falling edges of the signals, okay? So I'm going to go ahead and restart this. I'm going to put the end line resistors back in, okay? And now we're back to normal, and we're going to do another uh, circuit fault. All right, so for the next circuit fault, what I'm going to do is I'm going to put in uh, an extra resistor basically across the backbone, and I want to show you what the waveform is going to look like. What's going to happen is it's going to pull the signal down. You're going to see your can high and your can low voltages go down, and it's also going to bring down your 2.5 volt starting point, your bias line, okay? So I'm just going to put in uh, 20 ohms on it, and then that's going to decrease the backbone total circuit resistance below 20 ohms. Okay, so watch the scope. So if you look here, the initial backbone, it stays, uh, the bias, it stays at 2.5, but if you look here at where the data packet's going out, this is where it's drawing it down at right here when, it, when it, you're getting the communication. All right, so here. Let me zoom in, and then I'm just going to stop the scope, make it easier to see. So if you look here, let me draw this down here so we can see this. The can high, that voltage is being drawn all the way down to about 2.1 volts. Okay. Now, if you look at the, the other side, can low, it's at about 2.4 right there at the end, and then at the very bottom here, I'm at 2 volts right here, so it's, it's uh, not able to go uh, to the one and a half. okay? So that's what it looks like when you start to get uh, another resistor put in line that's pulling down uh, the CAN bus, okay? So that's... Uh, that circuit fault, okay? You always want to pay attention, though, to this line here. If you notice this line here, the line went down, all right? So if I restart the scope and take the resistance out, now it's back to normal, all right? So now you've got a nice clean-cut line that goes back here to the 2.5-volt bias, okay? That was uh, the last circuit fault that I'm going to do for today. I hope everyone has a good day. I hope that you enjoyed this, and take care. Thank you very much.